apologies are from Dr. Paul. Uh, he has an urgent meeting and is unable to join us today. So, um, Chinese lawyers, they are lawyers in a transforming society. As we know that China, since um, at least since market reform and opening up uh, commencing from 1978, is no longer a closed society. It has transformed um, into a society that regu regularly communicates and interacts with the outside world. So um, we use the word transformation rather than transition because the term transition implies a clear trend and a possible outcome. While we think that transformation is a more appropriate word to describe the situation in China and to keep the analysis neutral and to leave the question of how much change open. So our approach is that we focus on the role of lawyers in such transformation, which provide a lens through which we could get a general picture of um, this transforming society, law, and legal consciousness in post Mao China. And we focus on the qualification of lawyers, their changing status and organization, and their embeddedness in this cultural and institutional frameworks. Now, you might be a little surprised when seeing this title because you are expecting a presentation on the oppression of lawyers. The Chinese lawyers, they are not lawyers in wars, in conflicts, or in divided societies. They are in a so-called harmonious society. So when discussing um, about China's transformation, we always focus on uh, discontinuities, which seem, seem to be obvious, like we talk about um, pre-Mao, Mao and post-Mao China. But there are a lot of continuities. For example, this harmony and Confucian values seem to have penetrated all spheres of Chinese society, from the Communist Party's elite to business leaders and academics. And this construction of this socialist, harmonious society is a resolution adopted by the Chinese Communist Party in October 2006. So this kind of culture and thought is manifested in dispute resolution in China. People prefer mediation and avoid litigation because disputes are viewed as disruptions of natural and social harmony and most civil cases are settled extrajudicially. So in this kind of society, the role of law is that it is really a, um, it's a disciplinary law. What it means is that um, the law, law is to ensure the cohesion of the group or the society rather than to protect individual rights. So to understand the role of lawyers in Chinese society, we need to get this general picture of this institutional and cultural frameworks. So a little bit um, historical background. Laws, lawyers in traditional China were called litigation masters, and this name carries very negative meanings. Because people thought that lawyers um, are those people who would like to make troubles in order to make money. And officials regarded them as those who disrupted social harmony. And the government often restricted the activities of litigation masters as they challenged the authority of the officials. And there were no such things as law firms. And, um, and this litigation masters, they had to cultivate very good relationship with local magistrates in order to win the cases. So um, this photo shows a trial in the year 1889. So you will see that in the courtroom, there was absolutely no place for the litigation masters and their clients to sit. <coughs> and a um, modern lawyer system was established in China in the early 20th century. However, this system was attacked in the 1950s, especially by this anti-rightist movement. 
And during the Cultural Revolution, there was no law, no order, and it was a very chaotic society. And um, so virtually no lawyers existed uh, during the Cultural Revolution. And then it came um, this period between 1979 and 1989, and, and it is a period of restoring this lawyer system. So during this period, lawyers were state employees and re they received salaries from the state. And cases were also assigned by governmental officials and most were criminal cases. Legal fees were also decided by the state. And, um, and most lawyers were part-time and there was a very small number of them. And the threshold level of qualification was very low. To give you an example, so, um, there was an old lady, she was a middle school teacher. After retirement, she applied to the legal consultation office, so this embryonic form of the law firm as a lawyer. She knew very little about law, but she was very good at quarreling with judges and the prosecutors every time when she was presenting in a court. Her clients, however, thought um, she was a very capable lawyer and she was very popular. Um, the qualification examination started from 1986 and it was then replaced by this national judicial examination from 2002. And since 1989, um, um, the experiment with partnership as one of the form uh, to organize law firms has begun. And um, since July 1986, uh, the All China Lawyers Association has been set up. So you will see that um, the status and organization in post-mal China has been transformed. So um, according to a report by the China All Lawyers Association, so it is a bar association of China, it carries out the function of uh, administration of lawyers, so all lawyers in China are members of this association. So by the end of uh, 2012, the number of law firms in China had reached 19,361, uh, with an annual growth rate at 60%. And there are three major forms to organize uh, law firms, partnership, so um, proprietorship, and state-owned. And partnership is the major form. Um, and it's worth mentioning that since China's entry into the WTO in 2001, the Chinese government has loosened the restrictions on the entry of foreign law firms into Chinese market. Uh, for example, these restrictions on the number of foreign law firms, their locations, and the number of their offices in, in different uh, Chinese cities. So you will see that um, by 2012, uh, the number of foreign law firms in China had reached um, 228. Qualification of um, Chinese lawyers. So basically, there are two systems. The first one is this uh, evaluation and verification by the Department of Justice. <laughs> So according to the provisional regulation of lawyers uh, of the PRC, those people could be considered um, by the Department of Justice include law graduates who have at least two year legal practice or legal research and teaching. So you will see that the emphasis was on legal training and work experience. Another system is this bar examination has been established since 1986, but it is still supplemented by evaluation and <coughs> verification by the Ministry of, of Justice. And um, the lawyer's law of the PRC was adopted um, in 1996. And you can see that uh, the two systems of uh, qualification are still operating together. So like um, Article 6, uh, the emphasis is on this examination system. And Article 7, the emphasis is on this uh, verification and evaluation by this Judicial Administration Department under the State Council, um, i.e. this Ministry of Justice. So after processing the qualification as a lawyer, um, they need to practice, so need, they need training at law firm for a full year and 
they have they have they need to be a person of good character and conduct. So this is um, how Chinese lawyers look like today. And this is a photo um, of a civil trial. So you will see that compared to the trial in 1889, there has been a lot of improvement. So the judges, they, they sit there and the lawyers um, sit together with their clients. So to understand the role of lawyers in Chinese system, we need to examine how China is governed. So government is about um, this totality of processes and arrangements, both formal and informal, by which power and public authority are distributed and regulated. So we study both this formal political institutions, including the government and the judiciary, at the central and the local levels. We also study these informal institutions, for example, this patriotism and networks. So Chinese lawyers, they are embedded in a single political legal system, which includes not only the courts, but also this political legal committee of the Chinese Communist Party, procuratorates and police, and the prison and forced labor system. So in such a, in such a system, any law should accurately reflect the party's policy and the judiciary lacks autonomy and the rulings are constrained by local party orders, for example, the political legal committees and local governments. So under such circumstances, lawyers are subject to dual administrative controls. So they're subject to the control of the judicial administration, namely the Ministry of Justice under the State Council and the Department of Justice at a local level. And they're also under the control of Lawyers Association, so they include all China Lawyers Association and local Lawyers Association as well. But in such a political legal system, Lawyers Association, they are not entirely autonomous. To some extent, they are also subject to judicial administration as well. So to give you an example of how uh, this single political legal system operates, it's worth mentioning Article 306 um, in the criminal law of the PRC. So in the course of uh, criminal procedures, um, if the lawyer destroys or forges evidence, assists the party concerned in destroying or forging evidence, threatens or rules witnesses to contrary to the facts, uh, or change uh, testimony or provide false evidence, uh, the lawyer will be sentenced to fixed term imprisonment. But the problem is that um, lawyers and prosecutors in China, they are always in tension. So um, the definition of lose or lose witnesses is very vague. So uh, the prosecutors, they could easily abuse the use of Article 306 and put lawyers in prison. Between 1996 and 2009, around 300 lawyers were accused of forgery of evidence and had been sentenced because of Article 306. Apart from that, lawyers also have many difficulties with meeting their clients, collecting evidence, and reading original materials about the cases. <coughs> China is also an exemplary society. It means that the central government largely rules by examples offered to the people as templates of good moral character, which is to be imitated. The Chinese official seeks legitimacy of governance through ethical solutions, highlighting both the stability and order. Um, so uh, this kind of the socialist rule of law prioritizes stability and order rather than protection of individual rights. So to some extent, um, um, this um, lawyer's activities are restrained by such kind of society. And lastly, um, I want to mention this emergence of bands of lawyers and class action lawsuits. 
they are this um, group of people, they have middle school education and grasp very basic knowledge of law, of um, self-taught. And they, most of them don't have this um, certificate to practice. But they actively engage in protection of the rights of farmers and other disadvantaged people at the local level, and they often deal with this mass nature disputes such as land acquisition and housing demolition, which usually include a large number of people and huge uh, have so huge social impact. Um, they are called human rights lawyers um, in China. To some extent, this kind of um, people, they work outside of the courtroom, but they, they do real work in practice. And they are also outside the single political legal system. Yet, they are still constrained by this current cultural and institutional frameworks. So in conclusion, um, we, we have seen that um, there are a lot of improvement um, of the Chinese legal system. Despite this kind of uh, reform of the system, lawyers in China are still like birds in a cage. They have certain freedom, but only within that 